So, hello. Um, I wanted to talk about the full process for me when it comes to buying and selling a stock. I wanted to basically walk you guys through the entire, the entire process, right? So I, I've talked about Bollinger Bands. I've talked about fine, uh, technical analysis and how I use them. I've talked about where I find the stocks that I want to buy. But I haven't really walked everyone through a full, the full process, right, from finding the stock and, and everything. So I wanted to do a video like that um, tonight to just kind of walk you guys through the whole process, right? Because a, a lot of these times, a lot of the people on YouTube and on, on these sites, they just say, well, I buy the stock here and I sell it there and that's how I trade. And that doesn't really help anyone and that doesn't really teach anyone the full process that um, it entails. So, you know, and a lot of times people, like, they, they say, well, I'm buying the stock. What stock? How did you find it? Where did you find it? How, you know, they, it, it almost is like it just came out of, like, thin air. And they just, this is the stock, and this is how I know to buy it, and this is how I know to sell it. And it does nobody any favors, right? It doesn't really teach anyone anything. So that's the purpose of this video. So like I said in, in a previous video, there's a couple of resources that I like to use to find the stocks that I buy. One of them is TD Ameritrade's Stock Scanner, which allows you to put in your certain criteria, right? I'm looking for stocks between $5 and $10. I'm looking for stocks that have recently hit 52-week highs because I invest. I do something called momentum investing. So you might have heard the expression buy low, sell high. Momentum investors uh, buy high, sell higher, right? So I'm looking for stocks that are within a certain price range, that have hit new highs recently, that have lots of uh, unusual volume because that usually indicates you know, something is coming, someone knows something, even if it is insider trading, it still is an indication that people are buying large quantities of shares for a reason. Um, so uh, I have a variety of websites. The scanner is one of them. I also use investors.com, um, which shows me stocks that are having unusually high volume to the upside. In other words, they're going up a lot or stocks that have uh, unusually uh, high volume to the downside, which means they're going down a lot. So I, I, uh, I'll compile a list. And like, honestly, I'm, I'm sitting at my desk right now and I have a pad of paper here and a pen and I write down every stock that I'm interested in. And um, so I'll have a list, right? So I'll, I'll go to investors. And uh, let's say hypothetically that I've gone to investors.com and there's a stock uh, on their list that is in within my criteria, right? It's say, let's say $15 a share. Let's say that it's up significantly, right? Maybe it's up 6% or 5% on a day. That's pretty significant. Um, I write it down on my little list and then I go to Ameritrade. And the first thing that I do is I pull up the chart because I want to see uh, how far into this run up are we? In other words, did it just break out today? then I don't want to buy it tomorrow. I want to wait a day or two for profit taking and pullbacks and to see if it's a full on correction and sell off or if it's just taking a breather before moving a little bit higher, right? Like if I take a basketball and I slam it on the floor, it's going to go up and down. And when it hits, it's going to come a little higher and then it's going to go a little lower, lower, lower. But I'm trying to get that little bounce, that little momentum bounce, right? So if I, let's say it hits 15 on Monday, uh, on Tuesday, it could be 1350, right? So I like to hold back a little bit and see where it goes and see how much room it moves. Um, that's if it is at the very beginning of a breakout. And then I'll keep an eye on it and I'll watch and I'll wait for a recovery, right? So if it's 15 and then it's 1450 and then it's 14 and then the next day or the third day, it's 1425. Hey, you know, and when I, I say those prices, I mean at the close, right? So it's down, 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 and then it starts to come back up a little bit. Now I'm intrigued. Now I start to think maybe this is a stock I want to buy. So the first thing I do is I find the stock on investors.com, for example. The second thing I do is I go on Ameritrade and I look at the chart. I want to see where it's been recently. I don't care about five years ago or a year ago. I care about here and now. I look at the one month and the three month chart and I see where it's been going. So if it's been steadily climbing higher and higher, Good. If it's been crashing for years and it seems like we're finally at a turnaround, also good. So the next thing I do 
after I look at those charts is I look at, you can actually see it right here. It's, it's called RSI, the relative strength index. I want to see that it's moving away from being oversold and gradually moving higher towards overbought. The closer we get to this, the better. Uh, I know you're thinking, why is overbought a good thing? And it's a good thing because it means that it's going to have, a, it has only a limited amount of room to go, right? It's going to cross this line and then it's going to start to sell off. So I want to try to get it around here. Now, this is just a one day chart, so don't really pay attention. But if I'm looking at a, a, a one month chart and I can see that it's gradually edging a little higher, closer to the oversold territory or overbought territory is really good because it means I'm going to be able to capitalize on a little bit of that momentum. And that's all I really want. I want to try to get 5%, right? If it can just go up five more percent that I can ride that wave of momentum and then exit in the oversold territory before it sells off or overbought, I keep mixing them up. I'm sorry. Um, that's a good thing. So that's the third thing I do is I look at the relative strength index chart. The fourth thing I like to do is I like to look at the calendar for the chart. So if I'm on Ameritrade's homepage, I've done a video on this too. Um, when you scroll down on the, on the stock that you're interested in and you scroll down past uh, the little like opening page where they tell you the price and the dividend, if there is one and the highs and the lows, and you start scrolling a little lower down to the, to the news, there's gonna be a calendar over here and the calendar is gonna show you earnings um, and when they're scheduled. So playing into earnings is super volatile and really risky because it's a crapshoot, right? It's like a roll of the dice. It could, it could go up, it could go down. If they miss by even a little bit, it's gonna tank. If they, if they uh, beat expectations, but it's only by a little bit and they were expecting a lot, it'll tank. So it's just so risky. So if I am to go on, for example, and I click on and I'm, I've now found the stock, looked at the chart and it seems promising, I've confirmed my promising uh, view by looking at the RSI chart, the relative strength index. Now I want to look at the calendar. If the earnings are coming out tomorrow, I might sit back. Now I might also look at the chart over the course of several years and see how um, the stock performs after earnings. If historically it does very well after earnings, maybe it's a gamble that I want to take. If it's historically 50-50 or historically underperforms on earnings and goes down a little bit, maybe I don't want to take that chance. But if earnings are um, a week away, now I'm interested because prior to earnings, stocks are volatile. People are guessing, is it going to go up? Is it going to go down? Maybe it's going to move higher. I'm going to buy it here. I'm going to, get, I'm going to capitalize on a little, uh, a little uh, upturn. But you got to be careful. If you're going to play earnings, you have to make sure that there's a, a, a period of time in between when you buy it and when the earnings are, right? You don't want to buy, oh, earnings are tomorrow or in two days. If earnings are a week out, you can, you can call it like an earnings trade and trade ahead of the earnings, hoping to capitalize on a little bit. Now, here's the thing. If you get out before earnings with a profit, you have to be happy with that profit because it is a 50-50 chance, right? It could tank after earnings or it could skyrocket. So you have to be, you have to have your goal price in mind, right? So I hope to make $300 on this trade or $500 or $1,000. And that all depends on how much the stock is trading for and how much you have to invest. So when these guys come out and they say, I made $2,000 on a trade, one of two things has to be happening. Either the stock has to be going up a tremendous amount for them to make 2000 on a small amount of shares, right? Two or 300 shares, or they have to have thousands and thousands of shares and hope for a very incrementally small price increase, right? 20 cents, 30 cents. And they have to be trading with $100,000. So either you're trading with 10,000 or you're trading with 100,000. But your your price, your, your, your goal target is gonna be different depending on that, right? You can't say, well, that guy who trades with 100000 makes $2,000 profit, so I want to do that with my ten. Not going to happen. You're going to be holding those stocks for a really long time. So your goal is to have a lower dollar amount profit, but maybe similar to that guy in terms of 
percentage gain, right? If he's aiming for 5% and he's trading with 100,000, you can aim for 5% with your 10,000. It'll just be, you'll make less um, money, but same percentage. So that's the other thing I like to do. Um, and then after I have researched the stock, even if it's a short-term play, I think we're all a little bit more well-rounded when we know the, the scope of the company, right? Do they have good earnings? Do they have bad earnings? Um, do they have a lot of debt? Are they, uh, do they have a lot of cash on hand? Are their revenues increasing? So one of the last things I like to do, because it doesn't really matter, I don't really care how the company has done um, on the uh, fundamentals, the earnings. I care about what the chart indicates, right? And so, but still to be well-rounded and to not be a fucking moron, I like to look at the chart and I like to look at the earnings and just to get an overall picture of where this company is, just because like I said in previous videos, we're, ed we're making educated guesses here. So the most educated guess I can make, the better. So I'll look at the earnings and that sometimes dissuades me from buying it. I might look at the company and go, ooh, Lots of debt. Fuck this company. I'm out and, and, and not buy it. One of the last things I like to do is I like to go on a website called stockflare.com, which I've talked about in, the, in the, my last video. Stockflare.com um, gives you a rating on the, on the stock between one star and five stars. Uh, obviously, the more stars, the better, just like in first grade. Um, but the more stars you have, the better. So that is just one more confirmation. And the last thing I like to do, believe it or not, is I like to go on Twitter. Um, I know Twitter isn't really good for anything, and it's kind of a stupid website, but it allows me to gauge what other investors are thinking about a certain stock. Here's the super huge caution about Twitter. Probably, probably an overwhelming majority of the analysts, analysts on there are morons who are just pushing their own agenda, right? So if you go on and you type in dollar sign and then the stock ticker symbol and search for that stock that you're interested in, you're going to see a lot of mixed opinions. You're going to see a lot of idiots pushing their own agenda going, this stock is done, it's over, goodbye, which will give you those knots in your stomach, man, and make you really anxious and scared because who is that guy? Why, why, what does he know? Why is he saying the stock is over? Maybe he's just shorting it and is trying to drum up that fear so more people sell the stock. Um, if, if they already own it, they dump the stock, it goes down, he makes money because he's betting that it's going to keep, keep dropping down. So you have to be really cautious. And the other thing tied into that is since we don't know who these people are who are coming out with their advice and their recommendations, is to take every tweet with a grain of salt, right? I just like to get an overall uh, overall uh, uh, picture into the stock. Twitter can help, uh, can, <laughs> underlined, and then bolded and italic with asterisks too, like um, like your old uncle who sends you emails and like everything is bold and they'll underline and color uh, important things, red and exclamation marks. Be very careful on Twitter. Um, but it is a good resource and it is a good tool, right? If you're scrolling through and you're thinking about buying the stock and 80% of the tweets you say you see say, I'm buying, I'm getting in, I'm getting in, I'm buying it here, I put in an order. It makes you feel a little bit more confident. Um, so that's the process that I will go into when buying a stock. Now, if I'm doing all of this homework, usually I'm doing it at night, right? At 7.50 on a Tuesday tonight, I'm sitting at my computer and decided to do this video. Um, so I'm researching. Now let's say I've decided to buy the stock the following morning, so uh, tomorrow morning, I, I've made my decision, I'm gonna buy the stock. Stock markets, um, so they open at 9.30 in the morning, but the first hour and a half is super crucial. If, if the markets open really strong, right? So 9.30 and it's straight up, usually but not always, means that around 10.30 in the morning, around 11, things are going to start to slow down and drop. Actually, this is a pretty good chart right here. I'm going to move myself over here now. Starts off really strong. And look at this. Right here at 11 in the morning, 1030, it starts to sell off. 
Um, it opened. Uh, uh, where did it open? I'm going to... 2044 is where it opened. And then it just kind of... Oh, no, I'm sorry. 2149-ish is kind of where it was at the open this morning. Then it pushes higher all the way up to 2160. And then right around 10 o'clock, you can see it. If you look all the way at the bottom of the screen down here, you can see the times. It starts to drop off. One of two things usually happens when this happens, right? Open strong, it tanks. Usually in the afternoon, it recovers. And investors go, oh, I didn't get it at 2160. But it dropped a little bit. Now I'm going to buy it here in the $20.75 range. And I'm going to catch that afternoon rebound. Usually that's what happens, right? It looks like the letter V. Opens up here, sells off, and then recovers by the end of the day. Today, quite the opposite. Dropped, and this isn't, by the way, the whole market. This is just one stock. We can look at, we can look at others. Uh, let's look and see what Snapchat did. Same thing. Started off really strong, dropped. So this is maybe the overall trend of the market was opened really strong and just dropped and stayed down all day. Sometimes our markets open down um, and then have an afternoon spike before selling back off. So a lot of people say you can't time the markets. Actually, sometimes you can. And the way you do it is by looking at these charts. So you'll see here these little blue arrows. So this is the last thing I like to do. When I'm about to buy a stock, I know 9.30 to 10 is, is kind of volatile. I'm not trying to get in. If the market opens really strong, I'm usually not trying to buy right at the open. I try to wait for the afternoon pullback, right? I'm not going to buy here. I'm going to wait. Even though it is breaking out, even though it is showing little breakouts here and there, there's one here, I'm going to wait because I know historically markets usually do dip in the afternoon, everything calms down, and then maybe resurges a little bit. Is resurge a word? Resurge. <laughs> um, if I see the markets open down here, in other words, it's a very slow and quiet day, I'll get in right at the open if I'm seeing some buy indicators, if I'm seeing these breakouts, if I'm seeing that it's maybe oversold and it's ripe for a turnaround. So that's the final thing that I do. Early in the morning, 9.30, 10 o'clock in the morning, I'm usually a little reserved waiting for some sort of pullback or I want to see how the markets open. If they open really, really strong, I wait. If they open really, really down, I buy. Um, and since markets are very volatile these days, take your profits, right? If you buy it down over here and it pops, right? Like let's say yesterday you bought it at 21, at 2091. And over the course of an hour, it went up to 2137. That's pretty significant profit. But you only have these big, nice profits if you invest a lot of money. At the end of the day, you know, it takes money to make money. You need money to be a trader. And if you don't have a lot of money, uh, you're not going to be super profitable. And it's okay when you're first starting out trading to not have very much money. Because really all you're after is experience. You want to have a loss. You want to have a gain. And you want to imagine to yourself, if I had more money, what would that loss have been if I was investing not $1,000, but 10000 and I lost 4%? Ooh, that's 400 bucks, right? If you have $1,000 and you lose 4%, you've lost $40. Not so bad, but it's good to have that experience. Oh, I lost money. This is what it feels like. If I was trading with more, oh, then it would have been really bad. Do I want to lose $400 on a bad trade? Maybe not. Maybe my, my stop loss will be 2% instead of 4%. Then that way, one day down the road, <laughs> when I have $10,000 to invest... I'll be more regimented and I'll say I'll stop at 2% at stop loss instead of 4% because the goal is to save as much money as possible. Um, so if you're trading with a small amount of money to begin with, it's okay because you're after the experience, not the profits. Um, 
So that's basically the walk you through the whole process. Uh, I find the stock on one of the websites that I've mentioned. I look at the, the technicals, right? I look at the charts. I look at the calendar to see if there's earnings. I look at all the, um, the, the review websites like Stockflare. I go on Twitter. And then finally, the next morning, right when the market's open, I look at these charts for breakout indicators. If I see that it's dropping a lot like this, where it's on the negative side of the Bollinger Bands, where it's on the negative side of the 20 day moving average, which is this teal colored line right here in the middle, I wait. And I wait not only for it to come and cross over, but cross all the way over and have a breakout. And as you can see here, not always a guarantee keeps dropping. Not only does it keep dropping, but it stays on the negative side of the 20 day moving average for a very long time. And it levels off, right? This is a potential buying opportunity, but not yet. And then look, it continues. This stock was a loser today. And even when it has these little incremental breakouts, they weren't so great. So the point to that, because I got off topic, because I forgot what I was talking about, is I look for these indicators. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, I hope you now understand the whole process. So I'm not just coming here saying I bought it here and I sold it there and I, got, I made money and good for me. Um, I'm able to tell you exactly where to find these stocks, how to research them, what to look for, uh, and most importantly, to protect your capital. It's super important because if you're wrong, and you buy it up here because you see a breakout and you go, well, maybe it's going to push higher and you don't sell it up here. And then you ride it all the way down here. You've got a pretty big loss. You want to see how big of a loss it would have been? Let's just figure it out right here because I've got my phone. Okay. Let's just say right here at this breakout, it's 2130. Uh, 2130. Now, Let's say it drops all the way down to here. So minus, what did I say? 20, 26. It's a dollar and four cents loss. Now let's say you bought 500 shares. That's your loss, 520 bucks. That's how much money you lost today by not using a stop loss, by not saying, eh, I wanna get out of this thing a little earlier. I'm looking at these signals. It's not looking promising. And by not locking in your profit up here too. Um, so I hope that helps. Please like, please subscribe and have a nice day.